back to Green Eyed Starlet. If you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Brandy and I'm working to live a life worth living through art, movement, and exploration. In my last video, we talked about dreams and I did a little bit of an announcement that, well, I bought a bus. But we talked about dreams and how, in my opinion, there is never a perfect time to start your process, to start your journey, to take that first step. The best perfect time is right now. But then I got to thinking, I wasn't taking into consideration all of us me included, who don't always know what we want to do with our lives. So today, I thought we could talk about how you can find your purpose through a few exercises that I've picked up along my self-help journey, because it's a long journey and it's a process. I feel like I need some kind of merch that says, like, it's a process. <laughs> Just like everything in life, it's a process. <laughs> But yeah, if you're feeling lost or a little unsure, or even if you just want some reassurance of what are you doing with your life, then make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up because it helps out the channel and me so much. And keep watching. So two little disclaimers here. I'm about to throw a lot of stuff at you, and that is not to overwhelm you at all, but I wanna give you so many options because I know that we don't all learn the same way. I know that we don't all process things the same way. So I wanna give you many different options to choose from so that as you're listening to this video, as you're watching this video, Video, you might find an exercise that you're like, uh, that might sound good. And then like two exercises later, you might be like, oh no, that's it. I guess this is 1.5 of my disclaimers, but if you don't find anything that sits well with you or resonates with you in this video specifically, I will be leaving a ton of resources in the description box down below of, of things I'm going to be referencing in this video and places that I found this information so that maybe you can go there and find more information from those sources. And my second disclaimer is that this video is not going to hand you your life purpose on a silver platter. I'm sorry, I wish I could do that. I wish I had that knowledge and understanding of the world and of every single beautiful person that is watching this video. But hopefully, if you do the work of self-reflecting and self-analyzation, it will slowly start to draw closer and closer to you. Now that we got the disclaimers out of the way, let's get into finding your life's purpose. Now, like I said, all of these exercises are going to take a lot of self-reflecting. Because at the end of the day, when we say we want to get our lives together, or we're when we say we want to start following our passion, we can't really do that work until we know what that work is trying to get us to. So you might want to have a pen and paper nearby while watching this video so that you can jot down some of these ideas and some of these questions so that you can answer them for yourself. Now the first exercise is for my friends that have literally absolutely no idea in the world what they might want to do and what their purpose might be. And basically you're going to ask your friends and family what they think you're good at and what they would come to you for or advice about. Now, if you feel a little bit weird asking your friends and family these questions like straight up, try to see if you can make a list of things that your friends have come to ask you in the past. I had really no idea what anybody was going to say, but I had so many people say that I would be the first person that they came to for travel questions. I also found out that like so many more people are interested in my like witchy side of things, which made me really happy because those are things that I absolutely love, but had no clue anyone would be interested in watching content or on that. So definitely ask your friends and family what they think you're good at, what skills you have, and what they would come to ask you for advice about. And compile this into a list and start to really analyze what skills that people think you have and what skills that you think you have yourself. You might be surprised that a lot of people think you have a very high altitude or I'm not, altitude's not the word, aptitude? Is aptitude the word? I'm not sure. For a specific skill that you're like, I didn't even know that was a skill. Those things are super important important to creating your identity, to creating your purpose in life. Now the next exercise is probably my absolute favorite exercise, and that is finding your ikigai. Now I was introduced to the term ikigai from Lavender. Eileen is an amazing creator. If you have never seen any of her videos, I highly recommend checking out her videos. I'm actually going to link one of her videos down below where she explains ikigai a lot more better than I can. I don't even know if that was a proper sentence. Basically it is a Japanese Japanese term that means your purpose for being, your purpose for living. Basically it's like a Venn diagram exercise where you brain dump things in four different categories and you find where they overlap so that you can find your perfect career spot. So in the first circle what you want to brainstorm is what do you love to do. This can be your personal hobbies and things that you just find joy in doing on an everyday basis or on a semi-regular basis. Just anything that you 
love to do. I go as broad as possible and as detailed as possible, I guess. Then in the second circle, you want to write a list of things that you're good at. Now, I liked putting the Ikigai exercise after asking your friends and family what you're good at and what they would go to you to ask advice on because if you don't know those things, then you need to go back to exercise one so that you can write these down. But you want to make a list of things that you're good at doing. Now, these can be skills that you've honed on, things that you're just naturally good at. It's also kind of like a feel-good thing for me when you're doing this because you're really reflecting on your life and you're really sitting there thinking like about all these positive things, which I like because the world's not always positive and it's okay to not be happy and not be positive sometimes, but it's also good to have some positivity in your life. I'm sorry, I got off on a little tangent there. So in the third circle, we're going to make a list of things that the world needs. It's really important when you're making this list to think of things that you believe the world is missing that maybe you could show up and change and be there for the world in these ways. How we can make it a better place for not just our families and our friends, but for the world. Once we get to that fourth circle, we're going to make a list of everything that we can be paid for. So what are skills, things that you're good at that you can get paid for? What are things that you love that you can get paid for? What are things that the world needs that you can get paid for? And what are just things that you can just get paid for? When I did mine the very, very, very first time, the very, 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 very first time, I had forgotten things in the thing that I'm good at that I could get paid for. And once I got to the paid for thing, I was like, oh, well, I do this job and I do this and that. So, oh, wait, I have this skill because I work this job or I've had this job. So then I can put it in this category. And I was like, oh, well, I actually have more things that I'm good at, which is always, again, a confidence boost. You want to remember the things that you're proud of yourself for. Obviously, you can add things to this for the rest of your life. I've been adding things to my list as I've moved through life and as I've learned new things, because once we get out of those broad four circles, we get into the tinier circles where you can find like things like your mission and your passion and your profession and things like that, things that you want to do. And then once you find the overlap there, you get into that little tiny bit in the middle and that's where you find your sweet spot. Like I said, this is a process. You're not going to just sit down and do it in one day. It's going to be something that you're going to want to think about. But once you kind of get your Ikigai exercise done and finished with, I feel like you have a way better sense of who you are and a little bit more pride in what you can offer the world. The next exercise we're going to talk about is one that I got from Emma Rosen's TED Talk, which I will leave linked down below in the description box if you would like to go check that out for yourself. And basically, just like many people, especially in the millennial Gen Z era of life, she had a perfect job, technically, but she still felt unsatisfied. And what I think is beautiful about what she says in her TED Talk is that she says that careers and our passions should be like dating. We don't usually marry the first person that we fall in love with, the first person that we kiss in that regard. And she said, so why do we marry the first career? career that we find. And I was like, that's a really beautiful way to think about it because I think that a lot of the times the confusion and the feeling of being lost and not enough comes from these ideals that have been implanted in all of us and told us that like this is the way. Like obviously that's still a way, but that's not the way. And I think that is really beautiful to start breaking that stigma that, you know, you only get one career. You only get one passion. I don't think that you have to settle on just one passion, one career, one one job, one thing that you do for the rest of your life. Because I've so struggled with that idea in my life that like, oh, I can only be one thing. So like for me, it was acting for such a long time. So when I was introduced to yoga and I like actually got my yoga certification, it kind of was hard for my brain to, no, it wasn't kind of hard. It was hard for my brain to wrap its head around its neurons around the fact that I could be a yoga teacher and an actress and that wouldn't take away from either of them. And what Emma did is she she made a list of all the jobs she had ever wanted that she still had some curiosity in, that she still was interested in now. And she tried every single one of them. And I think that is beautiful. And obviously I know that that is not feasible for everyone to go out and like quit the job that they currently have so that they can go out and try a bunch of different things. But with the beauty of the internet, we have so many options and so many choices here that we can take classes for free and for money on so many topics. Like, like like, name a topic, I can find you a YouTuber who talks about that and will teach you about that. I, I promise you. And things like I use Skillshare, this is not an ad, but man, do I wish Skillshare was on my
my side because that would be dope. Maybe one day Skillshare, you hear me? But like things like Skillshare and the platform that you're watching me on right now. So make your list of careers and start taking classes on those topics. If you find that you're totally not interested in any of the classes or anything that's going on, then you know maybe that's not for you because you are gonna have to go through learning a lot of stuff if you're jumping careers or jumping to new passions or learning new information. You're gonna have to go through some struggles, which we'll get into in the next exercise. Just remember that you can still follow a path that your younger self wanted you to follow. You can follow a new path that your older self is gonna love. The next two exercises are both gonna be more of like a journal prompt for you to write about and to kind of self-reflect and analyze. The first comes from Mel Robinson, and if you don't know who Mel Robinson is, oof, you are in for a treat. She is a motivational speaker, she is an author, she is just brilliant. She doesn't quite follow the same ideal of finding your passion and more likes to coin the term for it as like what energizes you. So the question to reflect on is what energizes you? What is the thing that like you lose time doing? I know my boyfriend says he just completely loses time when he's drumming or playing music and I think that is absolutely beautiful. I feel that way when I teach yoga a lot of the times or when I'm doing yoga even more. If I'm just like flowing on the mat and doing yoga, I lose all sense of time because I'm just so in the present moment. And I think it's beautiful to think of what energizes you. And that can change time and time again. It is important to reassess every now and then and see, am I still passionate about this? What can I do to make myself more passionate about this? What, what about this energizes me? How can I be more energized to this? When you get up in the morning, do you want to get to work or do you want to just lay there and be like, you know what I mean? Now for the next exercise, like I said, it's another journal prompt and it is discovering what you're willing to put up with in your dream career. And now I'm going to merge two different concepts into one and I think they come beautifully into each other. But one is from Elizabeth Gilbert's big magic book, which love, I love the book. And from Mark Manson's book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. And basically that is, and I don't remember what the term for it is, I know that there is. But but your brain is a problem solving piece of machine. So no matter how simplified our lives are, no matter how chill and like uncomplicated our lives are, our brains are always going to be looking for problems to solve. It's important that when you're looking at your dream career, your dream job, or your passion in life, that you realize that while it's gonna be everything that you've ever wanted, you're also still gonna face problems. And in my personal opinion, and I think Mark says this more, but you've got to be willing to to solve those problems. There are so many careers where you have to be willing to put in the work well before you're ever going to get paid and then once you do start getting paid, life is great. But there's so much on the back end. There is no job, there's no career that is easy to everybody. And I think that's important because, like my mom has always said this, I am so grateful to be my mother's daughter. But she has always looked at me and my love and passion for acting and being in front of a camera and performing and stuff like that and she's like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, what do you mean? How do you know? You don't know what, how I do it. My mom has never been someone who wanted to be in the spotlight like this. That's just not her thing. So those kind of problems of, you know, getting over stage fright or something like that is just not something that my mom would be willing to face every day in her career to make it worthwhile for her. So you have to figure out what things in your career, your dream career, your passion that you're willing to work for and you're willing to deal with. So I like to call them the good problems because they're problems, obviously, that need to be solved, but they're ones that you enjoy solving. So journal on that, if that made sense. So I've only got one more exercise left for you guys, but I really hope that you've enjoyed the video thus far. I hope that you've gained something so far, and if not, hopefully this last exercise will help you out because, like, the last one, so I hope it helps. I tried! And this last exercise is for all of my astrology loving peeps, okay? For all of my people who love astrology. I have been really digging into my birth chart lately and for the last few months I've been digging into kind of everybody's birth charts. I've been like, hey, what time were you born in one what city? But there is a lot of stuff that you can learn in your birth chart. So it is super easy to get your birth chart. I will leave a link down below of where I get my birth charts done from. It's completely free. You can even type in like free birth charts into Google and a bunch of websites will come up. There's three things that I want you to look at. And the first thing that I want you to look at is your rising sign. Now your rising sign is your identity, how you're supposed to show up in the world. So this can be a great identifying factor 
factor into what kind of career that you could possibly have and how you're gonna show up in the world to do that. Now the next thing that you want to look at on your birth chart is your north node. You're going to have a sign that your north node is in and you're also going to have a house that your north node is in. When you find that out, either like I think on the website that I link down below, a lot of the times will give you a breakdown of everything that you see in your chart. But you can also easily Google all of this stuff. So you can easily Google like what does my rising in Aquarius mean? What does my north node in Scorpio mean? Things like that and like um like for me, I think my Scorpio or my north node is in the 8th house. So I'm Scorpio north node in the 8th house and I would just Google that straight up and ask it, what does that mean? And there's a lot of things that it obviously pertains to. Some people say that the north node literally is your life purpose and like what your soul came to this earth to do. I know that astrology can be polarizing but be open-minded to it. And the third thing that I want you to look at is looking at your midhaven. The reason that the midhaven is so important is because it is actually attached to the 10th house which is your house of career and money. I'm not a professional astrologer so please do your research and take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. Your midhaven is what a lot of people think is your perfect career obviously or ties to your perfect career but it also and a lot of astrologers will say this is that it also is how you should do the things that are your passions. So it's like how you should show up in the world with what you're doing. These three things can give you a lot of information on your career path or what you should be doing with your life and how you should be showing up in the world, which I think is so cool. If you don't believe in astrology or anything like that, it still doesn't hurt to look at that and see if it sparks any ideas within yourself because I am a firm believer that we have all of the answers that we will ever need already inside of us. We just need something to unlock those answers, whether that be someone saying something and then us internalizing that and being like, oh my god, you're right, or oh my god, no, but that made me think of this x, y, and z. There is so much that we have locked up in here and in here that just need a little key or a little push. Maybe the door's just like a little, a little hard to push open. If you want more information about astrology, obviously there's hundreds of thousands of astrologers out there, but someone that I really like on TikTok is Astro Forecast, Astro.Forecast, I think. I'll, I'll leave a link down below to whatever I can for Astro forecast because I really love her way of talking about astrology and she has I think TikToks on specifically career paths in astrology that are really 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 cool so definitely go check those out as well but there you have it those are all of my exercises on how to find your passion how to find your purpose in life I know that it is not as easy said as it is done but I truly truly believe in you guys these are all exercises that I've used myself and I really wanted to mostly incorporate things that I had used myself so that I could kind of talk on their validity and talk on how much they have helped me. But remember that we are all very beautifully different human beings and we all learn differently. We all process things differently and we all reflect differently. So take what you've learned in this video and make it work for you. Like I said, I've referenced a lot of people's work in today's video because I am, I'm all about that self-help. I really enjoy reading self-help and trying to use what other people have learned in their lives and see if it works in my life. Does it always work? No. Just like I know that some of these things will not work for you, but it's really cool to learn and try things. And I want to hear from you guys, so please, please, please leave me a comment down below telling me if you know what your life purpose is, and if you enjoyed today's video, let me know which exercise was your favorite exercise, or the exercise that you feel like resonates with you the most. Like I said, the Ikigai test is my personal favorite, but I've used every single one of these to kind of get a better idea of who I am, because I love me some self-reflection. Thank you for clicking on today's video. If you enjoyed it, please, please, please give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. I post videos every Saturday. I'm trying to get better at the Saturday part because I know I've been posting them a little bit late, but I post videos every week and you don't want to miss out on a single one. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell notification. I haven't heard anybody say that lately, but like, why not? Ring the bell, you know? Why not? I love you guys so, so incredibly much. Know that you are not alone in anything that you are feeling. You are valid, you are loved, and you are going to do absolutely amazing and incredible things. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I will see you next week. Bye!